I'm going to talk about how to create a quality resume. So who knows what a resume is? It's kind of anyone tell me? Yes. It's a piece of paper that describes like your achievements, your educational attainments, and your objectives for your future, for your future boss, or a future job. All right. Anything else you'd like to add? Yes, and it's pretty much um, a way to sell yourself. Put it uh, shortly. A bit of a description, but I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So what is a resume? A resume is a written document that contains a summary of your work experience, including positions held at each employer and your educational background. All right. So. Key points in a resume. What are key points? Anyone know? Um, I think a lot of people like an objective on your resume, which uh -huh. kind of um, is tailored to individual jobs or whatever you're going for a scholarship, um, and it talks about why you want, um, why you're applying for that. Um, all right. Anything else? Personality traits and like work ethic qualities, so they know like what kind of um, person you are, how you like relate to other people on the job. Very good. Yeah, very good. Anything else? Work experience, your skills, service that you've done, conferences that you've been to, like different things like that. Very cool. All right. Um, now we have a um, a good outlook at like the more um, um, specifics. How about more the vague? What does every resume have to have? Uh, contact information. So like a number. Like name, number, name, address. address, email, email. Yeah. And any last last uh, suggestions that you feel like a resume should definitely try to have? Your education, like maybe you got a degree somewhere. Very good. All right. Yes. Wait. It also can't have any errors. It has to be free of errors. No mistakes. All right. No errors. All right. Now let's see what we have here. All right. Name. So we'll cross that one off. Good job. Address, phone number, objective or summary, on a roll, good job, professional experience, relevant skills or traits, education, all right, and Definitely, um, it's not necessarily, it's not as common nowadays, but references. References are your definite number one source to getting that one job that you know, it gets your foot in the door. And once you get your foot in the door, then people know, start to know who you are, and they start to, be, they start to understand what all you can do and who you know. And who you know is definitely very valuable in terms of finding that right job. Right. And then, not necessarily needed, however, cover letters. Cover letters are always something that you know everyone could always use. Yes? Cover letters I want to add adds to the professionalism of your resume. So yes, definitely. Cover letters add to the professionalism, like you said, um, which uh, inc uh, includes errors. Um, the fact that there's no errors on your resume shows that you, you were able to look it over once, twice, three times, and that shows that you're definitely um, meant it to be professional. Yes? And um, I recently went to a place where the lady was telling me if you say that you're a perfectionist on your resume, then you better be a perfectionist on your resume. They will look, like that is like a trigger let, um, word, and then they will look at you and be like, oh, if you have any errors, and then you basically are saying something that isn't true. Definitely, definitely. And that's uh, something that, it's one of those things that you want to make sure that you don't put too much of. A lot of times also, yes? Oh, just finish and I can add. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, another thing is that it's acceptable, but to a certain degree, like having a Twitter handle, so if you know you have a professional one that says you know UF Kayla UF so and so, that's more than acceptable. However, there's some that are like Sexy Mama 64 and you know T Pain 23. Mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't keep it on your resume because that kind of makes it look unprofessional. So what was what were you gonna say? Oh, going off what she said, it has to be consistent, reliable, and valid. Which means, let's say you say you are always well prepared for anything you have to like any task you have to complete or any objective you have to meet, mm -hmm. but you come up looking and you know, not dressed appropriately for the interview. That's showing them that you don't even know how to put together an outfit, nevertheless come prepared to present yourself. Very true, exactly. Good point. All right. So here's an example of a resume. So on the very top, the very top, not necessarily all resumes are gonna look this, you're more than welcome to shift it around and do what you need to, but the major components that we saw here, 
the number, name, address, objectives, experience, education, and so on, are definitely shown in your resume. So in order to make that, you know, your proper resume to make sure that it's, you know, free of errors and everything, you want to be able to put your objective or summary that can help describe the value you bring to a prospective employer and entice the hiring manager to read your resume. Then of course, if you have any experience, so if you worked, even if you worked at a um, McDonald's when you're in high school or any type of experience, shows that you were reliable, shows that you were efficient, and shows that you were able to manage a job. Um, relevant skills, so if you know any type of like Microsoft Office, how many of you use Microsoft Office? All right, how many of you feel com like efficient with it? All right, can you, there you go, thank you. Um, what other programs do you think you could put under that category of relevant skills? Yeah? Like also PowerPoint and Excel, because Excel forms those spreadsheets that you could possibly be using in an office setting. So Definitely. I feel like that's important. Yes? Photoshop. Photoshop, definitely. The employers would love to see Photoshop, especially if you're getting into that advertising, mm -hmm. advertising business or anything that deals with um, media. Final Cut Pro for like video editing. Definitely, definitely. Final Cut Pro. Uh, a lot of the um, major organizations, even like Pixar, use Final Cut Pro. Mm -hmm. That's one of those programs that they use that are just, you know, they're fundamental. So if you have any of those relevant skills and you're applying for that, you know, even an internship or a job, definitely you would want to put those um, in there. Then of course your education, your education should always go in there. You, now the one thing, can anyone tell me what they think is the number one error that people put on their resume uh, under education? That y'all might think it is? They write this and they shouldn't. I'm gonna take a guess, I'm not sure. Is it their GPA? Yes, their GPA. That is the one thing that you should never have to be shared with anyone. You're allowed to put a summa cum laude or the other ones but in terms of your GPA, you should always keep that private. That's definitely your own information, so you should never keep that on. Yes? Why is that, though? Like, you know, what if you have, like, an outstanding GPA, like a 4.0 or a 3.0 or something, you want to put it on there? Is that a problem? The problem with sharing a GPA is, like, sharing, like, a social security number. Um, it's pretty much your own confidential information. So in the event that you decide maybe you want to go for a public office later on in the future, and you feel like, yeah, okay, I had a 3.0 in high school or a 3.0 in college, and you feel like that's acceptable, but then you think, oh, maybe I want to be the first female president in the world, uh, or in the United States, excuse me. And then you go and, you, you know, everyone's just kind of like pulling up your records, and uh, what they find is this resume. This resume, it looks, you know, great, it shows everything, but it shows that you had a 3.8 in, um, you know, your uh, significant, you know, college experience. Then that starts getting people to wonder, oh, you got a 3.8, while other people had a 5.2 or a 4.0, depending on if it's high school or college. So that's something that you would want to keep private, because then that's where they would um, use that against you. They would target you, and they would just be like, "Did she really just get a 3.8 when she, you know, she wants to be president of the United States?" It's one of those things. So I mean, it's definitely uh, you can, but it's considered taboo and probably shouldn't. Yes. So either list, you know, your degree achievements mm -hmm. or um, like your level of honor. Yeah, definitely. So, you could even include clubs, organizations that you do you're involved in. That's definitely beneficial to your resume. So I mean, if you have any of those, put it through. Um, it's, it comes up to your final judgment. If you want to use uh, your GPA, you're more than welcome to. But they tell you, or we're best inclined to try and stay away from that, just because that's more of your personal information and you might not want to be able to give that information out. All right. And then here's our cover, cover letter. Um, so cover letters are good for our, our good when presenting resumes because they show what you're going for the job um, and who you're speaking to. You're speaking directly to that person. So if you're going to an internship, have any of y'all had any internships? Okay, did you ever do a resume and cover letter? I had to do a resume for another volunteering option I had, but not necessarily the internship I have. Okay, okay, how about yourself? No, I actually just had to do a resume. Just a resume? Yeah. Yep. I mean, cover letters aren't as um, common as resumes, but they definitely help. They definitely help um, because when you do a cover letter um, and you use you know, your proper grammar, proper punctuation, all that, and they, that employer is able to read it and see who you are, that's your time to shine. That's your time to go and say like, bam, who are you? In the very first um, paragraph, you're able to say exactly what you do, exactly why you're there, exactly what you want to get out of this internship, and why you deserve to be picked. Because they're sorting, they're going through um, resumes, they're sorting through them, and they're just like, uh, okay, nothing, nothing, you know, different about this one, they're going through all these different resumes, they're just like, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. When they see that resume with the cover letter attached in the front, they're just like, okay, this is different. Let me read a little bit, let me see what they're trying to say. 
And then they'll read it and they'll see that, oh, your vision in Photoshop, because you're allowed to put characteristics or traits in there. They'll re go ahead and read that and they'll see like exact like examples that you've done because you can also include clips. So you can write about that in your cover letter and you can just write exactly why you're there. You could write like if you um, ever had like a magazine that you wanted to write for or something that you can tell them um, how long you've been reading their magazine to show that you've definitely been, you know, keeping up with how everything runs. So cover letter is definitely beneficial in terms of um, adding more to a resume, more getting more out of a resume. All right. So here's a little question for you all. Why do you think, outside of um, what we've mentioned, why do you think resumes are so important today in life? Yes? I think it's because resumes are a snapshot of who you are. So when someone doesn't know you, it's the quickest, easiest, most efficient way to give sort of an overall guiding to, um, to why you're there, like you mentioned with the cover letter or with part of the objective. Um, so that you can get out of it what you want, they can see if you're a good fit, and you can just sort of, sort of be that overall. Yeah, definitely, definitely, good answer. Like she said, it's like a preview or a snapshot to what they want to expect. So when they read this, they're going to be watching everything for when you come in. If you display those characteristics, if you look the part, if you like show that you are the person for the job, they already read your stuff. Now they're going to see you in person, have this interpersonal relations with you in the interview, and they're going to notice all of that. Of course, definitely. Or not notice all of that. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> very right, very right. And did you have anything you'd like that? Um, I just want to say a resume is pretty much how you are on paper, like all your achievement and stuff. And then the next step, of course, is the interview. So it's more of how you interact with them and your communication skills and such. Definitely, definitely. So how many of y'all have a resume right now? How many of y'all think that y'all might need to update that resume within the next couple of weeks or so? All right. I actually just updated mine. <laughs> Do you have any other last comments? I have a question, actually. Sure. Can you talk to us a little bit in closing about um, how long a resume should be? Because mine is too long. That's what I really need to edit, and it's hard to make edits. Like, how do I know what to keep and what not to keep? Definitely. Okay, well, have you ever heard of a thing called white space? No. Okay, white space is pretty much right here. You see it says, hmm, and the clouds. Yes. Uh, and pretty much it says, why do you think this is so effective? Pretty much, where does your mind, or where does you, where do your where is your thought process process going straight to? The main mm. image. Mm -hmm. And that's because of all the white space. So pretty much, when you're writing a resume, you want to make sure you add white space because too much text is going to leave your reader to kind of like thinking that this is a novel or a book. They're not going to want to read it. So you're going to see it, and you're gonna, that 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 person that's reading your resume, they're going to be like, what is this block? So you want to make sure you incorporate white space. And you want to try and limit it to one to two pages, no more than two pages. If it's more than two pages, I mean, you, you can try and cut down what you need to. See if maybe you can do it front, back, reverse, and just kind of like make sure you put, definitely add white space because that makes your resume so much more efficient, I think. Yes? And I have something to add. Um, let's say you're in college or whatever, you will definitely not have any high school stuff on there, so you just have college stuff. And um, I mean, try to limit it as far as like, you put the most important things on there. Like, let's say you're going for a specific job and you have, like, different experiences in those areas. Like, make sure you have those on there. You might pick up a few other things so to make sure it's not too long. Because at the end of the day, there's several different resumes that's going to be read, so you want to make sure yours is not too long. It's to the point because they're not going to sit there and go through every one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, but if you do have anything that you feel that it has to be shown, especially if, even if it were in high school or if it was in high school, and you feel like it's, you know, crucial to, you know, that organization, like if you're in some type of like breast cancer awareness club or something, even if it was in high school and you feel like this is now your employer that you're gonna be going to, maybe like a Relay for Life type organization or something like that, you wanna make sure that you include it to show that you, since the beginning, were a part of it. And like you're saying, like clubs, organizations, events you've been to, and different sports you've been in, because that emphasizes your fact to be part of a group, yep. work with other people, team be work. a team player, have good character. You know, so all of those things can go into any job, but especially if it's a specific job, even if that sport was like soccer or whatever, and you were like 10, yep. you learn from that to work with other people on the same team. And that's what work is, working with people and interacting with other people, like we're doing, on a similar projects. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree completely. And resumes, you know, as an ending, it's definitely your time to shine. So definitely try and incorporate as little, but as much as you can in a resume to show that you're proficient in everything that you do and that you're the one that they need to hire. All right. Thank you so much for your time.